Hello everyone and thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are around the world. This is the Voyage of Water Show right here on VN where I get to sit down with celebrated stars, inspiring leaders from all around the world who get to share with us their stories, their journey and how it is that they came to the incredible success that we get to celebrate today. And today's guest is of course right of course on the same and on that particular part as well. I can't wait to introduce you to him but let me show you what you can expect on the show today. Have a look at this. Growing up, did you always know? Was art always part of your childhood? Paint us the picture of your growing up. We saw our, our dad drawing a portrait of the three of us, him and us. Yeah. And from that day, we were like, we are artists. And every time when I was in the office, I'd still go back to drawing. And I didn't think I was going to be able to uh, venture into art professionally. So my main source of inspiration is my childhood. Uh, my mother is one of the most amazing people I was blessed to live with or to be uh, given birth by. I take this as an amazing adventure and I think, uh, I believe that a smooth sea doesn't create a skilled sailor. Now, being an artist is one of the most revered and celebrated art forms within the world because it's not an easy thing to do. But our guest today does it so effortlessly and is just, I mean, look at him. Ladies and gents, <laughs> the one and only Fatwani Mukeri. Yes. Did I say thank, it correctly? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm great. Uh, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I sure. mean, everyone in the studio today was looking at your outfit and how you dress, and everyone was like, this is a true artist. <laughs> sure, thank As you. As you can share, you can tell an artist by just looking at them. Thank you so much. Yeah? Now, tell us where it all began. I, you know, I like grilling my guests with this question particularly because it always gets to help us get the framework of what kind of led one to the part that they're in today. Yeah. Um, growing up, did you always know? Was art always part of your childhood? Paint us the picture of your growing up? Sure. Uh, I started doing art at the age of seven. Yeah. And uh, I have a twin brother who I started at the same time. We saw our, our dad drawing a portrait of the three of us, him and us. Yeah. And from that day, we were like, we are artists. And it's something that I've always known that I am. And growing up, obviously, you, you go astray, you find other ways to make money, and then your calling finds you again, you mm. know? And I'm grateful that my calling found me and I answered. Yes. You know, and I'm living uh, what I'm, I'm living my purpose. Yes. I think yeah, I'm living in my purpose. Yes, sure. yes. It found you while you try to run away from it and it was like, uh-uh, come back. Sure. <laughs> now you and your brother, you know, you, you guys have such a close relationship. We get to, we celebrate, I would say celebrate you because I'm probably one of the people who always double click <laughs> when <laughs> I get you. to see um, your bond and your relationship, but you both in art. But share with us how was, you know, being a twin growing up um, and, and, and what that experience was like. Are you guys even twins? Yeah, we are twins. Yeah. Uh, being a twin is the biggest blessing for yeah. me because you are born with someone to navigate this tough life with. And uh, there is a dark side to being twins where Which you is? are born uh, with a lot of attention and you don't understand why people give you attention and the other kids are not getting attention. But then you... Then I grew, or we both grew to understand that us being twins doesn't mean that we are weird or we are, yeah, we're just weird. We actually are desirable. People mm. wish they could be twins and <laughs> yeah. we used it as our power. So uh, it's the most amazing thing because you're born with a best friend. You're born with someone you can share everything with because you're almost like identical. Yes. But then you are each individuals with uh, different personalities and uh, whatever goals, mm. but then we share so much and we are yeah. so similar and yeah. different. Now your experience is different to a lot of people's experience because you know you are a twin, yeah. but also how do you then find your own voice within that? Because you're always associated together, you're always you know grouped into being one even though you're two human, two people. Yeah. But how did you go about finding your voice um, within that? It took us a while. Yeah. There was a point, I think a good five years where we were not close. And that was important for us to find our own way, you know, find my own voice. And um, I'm very, I'm a social person. My brother is not very social. Okay. So that's a very big difference between the two of us. And um, we are obviously best friends. I make the friends. And then he, if I say this guy's cool, then 
okay. we could, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, finding my own voice took a while. I don't think there was anything I did special. Okay. I just somehow as you grow and you mature, you find your own path and you make peace with the fact that uh, you are your own person, mm. you know, mm. as a twin. Yes. You, you know, we shared a lot, a lot until maybe the age of 25 even a bank account. What? And then, no ways. you know, girlfriends came in, <laughs> oh, everyone bought their own house. Yeah. But yeah, it's fun, it's fun. Yeah, and it's so yeah. interesting because a lot of people are not twins, so getting sure. to hear those nuances that come in play. <laughs> um, how did you discover that art was your purpose? Because you did say earlier on that you are now living in that. Yeah. How did you know it was your purpose? So uh, my first career was in advertising okay. as an art director. It sounds like it's art, but it's not art. It's creative work. Mm. You know, uh, you're writing ads, you uh, designing billboards, t all that stuff. And every time when I was in the office, I'd still go back to drawing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we started our own business. I see a different you, which is a photography business, mm -hmm. uh, production house. And I would still, still find myself drawing. And lockdown hit and our business is running. N nothing is happening, obviously. Uh, I sat with myself and I'm like, who are you? What do you want? Let's say the, the world ends now. What is it that's going to make you happy? Mm -hmm. And it was only two things for me, to, to paint and to to do like gymnastics, backflips. Oh, really? Like very, yeah. I, I like, what do they call it? Uh, I grew up in Acrobats? the township. Okay. I grew, yeah, I grew up in the township. So they say I'm a tumble and all that stuff. Okay. So I started training to do that because it makes me happy. Wow. And then I started drawing because it makes me happy. Yeah. And I didn't think I was going to be able to uh, venture into art professionally. You know, it, it, it always been the thing that I enjoy doing and my way to show off my skill to mm. other people. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, just in the middle of lockdown, I was able to start my career as an artist. And when the door was open, I didn't look back. Mm. I just said, OK, this is it. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it, been, it's, it's looking been... great. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, I mean, drawing, painting, um, I find it's extremely difficult, firstly, because I can't even draw a stick, man. I yeah. don't, and I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to help us distinguish this, right? Sure. Do you think art and, like, painting, drawing, being an artist is something you're born with, or that's something that you can acquire or learn as you go along? There's the technical part of it, which yes. you can learn. Okay. But to be honest, art is, is not a career option. It's a calling. You know, it's not a thing where you can go, oh, yeah, I'm choosing to be an artist. You know, you can try, you can learn how to be. But there's the emotional aspect. There's the part that the drawing or the technical part of it can't, can't, can't uh, be part of it, you know. Okay. So let's say I paint a, a portrait and it evokes your emotions. That's the part that the technical side of art can't get into. You know, so the emotions that you feel when you see it mm. is where the calling lies within okay. art. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's that's what makes us artists artists. You know, and I, I honestly th believe life is all art. You know, uh, being a scientist, mathematicians, anything that has problem solving is art for me. Mm. And we are just uh, in the other lane of art where we... Uh, we are documenting time, we are expressing our feelings, we're telling stories through uh, uh, inks and mm. uh, oils and yeah. acrylics, all that stuff, yeah. you know. All the, the, the colorful stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you, I always wonder, and when I get to see your artwork, because you, you, you tell a story yeah. in, in your art, right? Yes. Where do you source these ideas from? Where do you, do you see something and decide, I'm gonna paint that or I'm gonna draw that? Or does it, where, that, where inside of you do you source it from for you to be able to put it on a canvas? Yeah. So my main source of inspiration is my childhood. Uh, my mother is one of the most amazing people I was blessed to live with or to be uh, given birth by. Mm -hmm. And she's super inspirational, you know. So I always try and tell the stories of my upbringing. Mm -hmm. The the feeling I've always felt when I was with her, I used to, uh, she's still alive, by the way. Yeah. So I used to bake with her. I, we used to sell uh, chicken pieces, masonja, all that stuff. And I'd spend a lot of time with her. Mm. And she'll be telling me her stories, how she grew up, and how she also kind of um, instilled 
principles, life principles within us. Like, you know, growing up in humble beginnings, she'd say, if your friend has a cool sneaker, don't be jealous. Be happy for him mm. because it will come to you as well. Yeah. You know, and you can feel the, the feeling of jealousy. Dismiss it. You know, all that stuff. So I always look at all the life principles my mom gave me and make them subjects to what my art is. And then uh, I love music. I love hip hop music. And I think hip hop music has amazing messages. People okay. are frustrated, people are hurt, people are mm. happy. And I find ideas there, you know. Um, and when, when like an artist, another one of my favorite artists uh, had a song called Moments You Can't Relive. And I immediately thought of how, what if I take this and make it a visual, a visual thing yeah and I make mom a paint moments that I can't relive you know and that was my wow. subject and my my uh, my theme for mm. whatever mm. artwork I was making so that's how I find my inspiration mm. you know now you know these are all intriguing questions because I know that there are so many audiences at home who also get to ask themselves these questions so sure. um before you go on that canvas before you begin before you start what what is the procedure that you go through um is there a particular form formula that you first need to sit in a particular room in this particular <laughs> no. um what how, how does that go about uh to be honest art for me is very easy yeah. And it's only easy because I do it all the time. Okay. I'm constantly drawing in my head. I'm constantly looking at visuals. And on my phone, I'm looking at things that give me ideas. So when I'm in my studio, I just paint, you know, and I draw. It's, it's, not, it's not hard for me. Yeah. It, and and that, that is only because I'm constantly do it, doing it in my head. You know, I've, I'm constantly thinking of ideas. What's my next artwork? I've got a millions of them, millions of them in my head, mm -hmm. you know, and I, it's just expressing it, yes. you know, and people do ask me, how do you find all this inspiration? <laughs> and it's, it's, I think I don't wait for inspiration. I'm constantly working. Mm. Inspiration will come and go, whatever. I'm still yes. there and yeah. I'm, I'm sketching. I'm always with a sketch pad and then my iPad, wherever I am, wow. I'm, I'm sketching. Yeah. Or I'm looking at art and I'm sending my brother with this artwork that, you know. <laughs> so I'm constantly working. Yeah. But it's not work for me. Yes. To be honest, I'm having fun. Yeah. yeah. Now, I want us to touch base on this particular element of mm. art, which is, which separates it from just being a, 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 a... One would say something you do because you love, but mm. it being something that sustains you. Yes. You said you have taken it now as a full-on career. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, we know many parents who say, but this is just a hobby. This mm. can't be a career. You can't make money out of it. Mm. For you, how did you find that balance and enabling yourself as an artist, doing what you love, to be able to still be sustained in it yeah. and make a living so you know one one of the biggest mistakes I think people make is separating the two mm. if you are an artist or you whatever you are you must enjoy it and while you're enjoying it you must make sure you are making a living of it yes. don't separate them I don't separate them when I'm in my studio and I'm painting I'm still a business these are my, these are my emotions. These are my uh, ideas. This is a piece of me. I'm giving birth to something that will nourish someone or make someone feel better, or whatever, it, or heal them. Mm. And with that, I'm not selling those feelings, but I need to have access to create more because I was brought in this uh, life to create and and heal mm. people through my work or yeah. make people feel a certain way through my work. So if I'm I'm painting and people buy these artworks, they're only adding it to me to create more, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, I must take both those things seriously because it's one thing. It's fun. I, like, I go to the stationery shop with my brother and we buy a lot of canvases, whatever, paints. Mm. And you'll be shocked how much we spend buying that stuff. But to me, I'm like, oh, it's like I'm going to, it's like you bought a kid a PlayStation <laughs> or a trampoline. Yeah. And... In, with that excitement and, and, and pure love and joy, I'm able to create all these things that I create that mm. ha make people happy, yeah. you know. And um, I'm, I also take the business part serious because mm. people will say, hey, man, I'm curious, how much is that? Can you send me a catalog? So I'm not the artist that will paint and go, your way, I don't know. I must find someone to do <clears throat> a catalog for mm. me. Yes, at some point I will. But I'll do it myself. Yeah. You know, I paint, take a photo, uh, sizes, materials, 
is there how many editions you know yes it makes makes my life easier because people dm me i just send them a link to my catalog you'll see the prizes you'll see how many is that, mm. which is sold which is available mm. you know because i can't always you can't just always be having fun even yeah. <laughs> soccer players skaters yeah. whatever there's the business side of it which is part of all of that yeah. so you can't you separate can't separ- the two yeah yeah know? which which is which is why it's it's purpose that pay P- paid purpose yes. which enables us to 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 have you know sustainability within this exactly now we're going to go to a quick break and okay. after that we come back and we chat about um you dining people and having people sit down and have conversations in this space um, Um, your restaurant. Yes. We're going to touch base on that and so much more after this quick ad break. Awesome. From painting and being an artist to being a restaurateur, <laughs> ladies and gents, Fatwani does it all. <laughs> um, we were speaking earlier on about your fashion sense, um, sure. you know, um, with the crew uh, here at SET. And, and we were speaking about the expressionism and how you're expressing yourself with your art, with your fashion. But now you're taking on a completely different side of expressionism, which yeah. is a business, running a restaurant. Yeah. What inspired that? What led you to getting into that part of the industry? So myself and my business partner and mentor, we've always had a dream to have a restaurant yeah. and we love cooking for each other. You know, and we passionate about food and going to this restaurant and yes. that restaurant. So we we had an opportunity next to my studio. There was a restaurant that left and they said you can take it up if you want to. And I said cool, let's do it. And we partnered with other people who are experienced in the business. Yes. And it's been like an amazing journey. It's a tough business. Uh I won't lie getting into it. I thought, "Oh, it's easy, you yeah, know." Yeah. And to be honest, there's like the ego element of it where you go, "Yeah, I have a restaurant." And then when you have it, you're like, yeah. "It's tough. It's tough business. You're managing people, you're managing uh stock, all that stuff. Customers. Customers." Yeah. But uh, I'm a man of many talents and I refuse to box myself to yes. anything. So yes. I take this as an amazing adventure and i think uh i believe that a smooth sea doesn't create a skilled sailor yes. so it it has to be rough for yeah. me to come out alive and yeah. and be proud of what i'm doing you know and what experience do you want people coming into your restaurant and also get to share where is the restaurant and what it's yeah. what it is but what experience do you want them to to have coming or when they are dining and sitting there yeah. how do you want them to feel what do you want them to experience so uh firstly the restaurant is in 44 stanley which is in auckland park and i want people to feel i'm i'm a big aesthetic guy I okay. like uh, I'm a visual person. Yeah. You know, uh, it's a very Insta- Instagramable place. You know, I want people to walk in there and like want to take photos. And then after you'll get a great cocktail, good burger, like mm. the food food is good, uh and drinks, you know. Yeah. Uh there was a point uh a few years ago where I was into bars, yeah, you know, going to bars with my friends on a Friday, Saturday and I wanted to create something similar to what I've enjoyed yeah. everywhere when I'm in Cape Town or when yeah. I'm around in Josie or Devon or when I'm overseas. And that's the feeling that my restaurant has is like you it's a little bit of a time traveling thing. It's it's a bit old school. Uh beautiful tiles, everything is yeah. just cool, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I I want people to feel like Wow, okay, this is nice, it's different, yes, you know. Yeah. Of course. I mean, if you're in Johannesburg or you are planning on coming to Johannesburg, do visit 44 Stanley and go and experience good cocktails as yeah. you said, good burgers and amazing food, right? Yes, so yes. that's definitely one thing that I know for a fact I'm going to be going to enjoy and so many of you at home as well. Um what what more do you want to explore? You've explored, you know, art, you've explored um the industry of uh, the restaurant and hospitality industry. Yeah. What else do you want to dabble in? Is is there more? I've always had a passion for architecture. Okay. Uh building stuff, you know. Uh and I I want to not venture, but I want to try out something. So I'm from Venda. I want to build like a, a studio there for myself that I can make it a residency for my friends from abroad and also get them to see where I'm from. 
and my friends from Josie to yeah. see where I'm from. But I want to design it in such a cool way. You know, uh, as I said, I'm an aesthetic guy. I like <laughs> beautiful things. Yeah. And, and that's my next venture. Okay. Architecture and just buildings, you know. Mm. Yeah, building stuff. Mm. Yeah. I see. No, I. What would you call it even if you were to give it a name? Uh, I think it's all art. It's still within my my art uh, space, you know. Yeah. Uh, I also had a passion for it since I was a kid. So now that I'm older and uh, bureau finances are looking great, yeah. uh, I'm gonna invest in myself to to design something first, and then maybe someone yeah. will see potential in me. Okay, well, we are looking forward to that. Sure. We're also just going to touch base on being a brand ambassador for a very special brand. Yes. Um, that we get to see, you know, you engaging with, with on, on the socials. What is, how, how different is that to you being your, or running your brand and your, yeah. you know, business, to having to be a brand ambassador for someone else's business and yeah. brand? Uh, so my, my partnership with Covasier, is a uh, is one of the most th most one of the most amazing things that has happened to me mm -hmm. as an artist and in my career, uh, in my career as an artist. So what it's done, it's it's given me cushion not to stress too much about finances, uh, because they pay, and basically the partnership is just going. Patwani, tell us what you want, and we'll back you whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You know. So I have a residency in the south of France. And I told them, hey, I'm going to be in the south of France for a month. I might extend and be in Europe for three months. Mm. And um, they're like, cool, great. Uh, we'll take you to the house of, of Covasia, the Maison. And uh, also, we, how can we back you up? And mm. I'm like, okay, I need a stationery. I need mm. uh, canvases, all the stuff that I'll be doing. How can you make my life easier? And, and they actually asked me, what do you need us to do? And they've been doing that for me for the past three years. Uh, if I want to host a bride with my friends, they bring stock, they bring whatever I need, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's amazing. And mm. they obviously uh, don't want me to be anything but myself. And that's like the, the beauty in that, being, in, being, being able to live within yourself and be yourself yeah. authentically so. Yeah. From doing some incredible art, to traveling the world, to being a brand ambassador, to opening a restaurant, our guest today has done it all. Ladies and gents, Fatwani Mukeli, thank you so much for joining us on the show of Fatwani. We had such an amazing time getting to learn about the art um, industry and, and all of the amazing things that you get to do. Ladies and gents, this is, of course, a virtual about a show right here on VN. Catch us again. Again, same time, same place, as we speak to inspiring guests, inspiring leaders from all around the world. From myself, Virta Voda, and the amazing Fatwani, it is goodbye and God bless. <laughs>